wish first on behalf of the ministry to thank the Ministry of Environment Japan and uh, the other partners who have come to be with us here to share this technology and see where it fits in in our uh, development path. I wish also to recognize government representatives who are here and various institutions, the universities, and any other institution represented. Of course, KEPSA, I've heard KEPSA mentioned, and other uh, CARA also is mentioned, and another institution. Having said that, I want also to recognize the media because unless you get it out, nobody knows what we are doing. So we are quite excited that you are here with us. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, let me start by saying, water is life. We always thought that. And every drop in this country counts. So essentially, and especially in urban centers, we are hardly having enough water. We are always fighting to have more because it provides us with a lot of good things. But once water has gone through the process of human use, many times it becomes waste water. Two years ago, when we had Unia 3, the global community said or took recognition that in the coming years, one of the major challenges to development will be how we handle our waste and how we handle pollution. So this workshop, I think, is addressing one of the topical issues which globally are seen as a challenge to realizing the sustainable development goals as well as development in general. Because when water becomes waste water, it means the waste water is no longer the water we say water is life. We have to see how to turn it back to useful water. And I think that's why we are here. Water can be waste in many forms. But today I think we want to talk of domestic. But also water can be waste when it is polluted in other areas. Uh, as we develop, we will need to use more water. And as we use more water, we will produce more waste. So I think that is the turning point. That's why we want to say we need to be prepared. We need to use the right technology in order to convert what we have made waste water back to useful water. The challenge to me is bigger in urban centers. Because in the rural areas where you have space, and especially where I come from, I come from Kitui. Many times Kitui is very dry. So every drop of water counts, and any drop of water which drops on the soil, it dries immediately. So I would say even wastewater there is very useful. Useful in the sense that you have the space, when you take a shower, what you think is wastewater is useful to grow your banana or your fruit if it can reach the right place, uh, if you have directed it there. But having said that, in the urban development setup, space is lacking. Most of you have visited or you own property in Mulolongo, for example, where you have one big building after the other one. And many times the developers, I may be wrong, I stand to be corrected. Many times those who develop those structures are more concerned with the most uh, critical aspect of waste. And that is the toilet process. So they dig a what, septic tank. But many times the water from the kitchen and the water from the shower, in order to reduce the need to be emptying the septic tank, they just put some oil and direct it someplace. So when all these buildings have come up and you walk through Mulolongo, it's like you are walking on a wetland. 
See only what, what we see. You have to jump from one to the other place and so on. From the Minister of Environment, our concern is what happens with that wastewater. We think it creates room for diseases. Because when we have so much wastewater around, which is not handled, treated, and delivered, then you have created room for mosquitoes. And in some of those places, mosquitoes are so strong, even they hit the net, you can hear them hitting the net looking for you. So, in a way, you convert a noble uh, element of water to be a vector of already a problem because you are not handling it well. You have assumed it's wasted, they are soap, you have just thrown it out carelessly. So you create problem of mosquitoes, mosquitoes comes, becomes malaria. On the other side, you create an issue of sanitation, dysentery, chorella, typhoid, name them. So I think having a technology which is going to help us to manage our wastewater is the most welcome thing which could happen to developing countries like Kenya. Two, you are all aware our main sewerage system is very limited. Actually, most of the small urban centers don't have up, uh, sewerage systems. So, we will need a system which can be decentralized or be used in a decentralized system, like what uh, the just because they are saying can be used. When you look at Nairobi, I think the sewerage system just does not even reach Kibera. The whole of Westlands is not on sewer. So we are talking of almost 70% of our urban centers, 70% not served by any centralized systems. Again, this technology will be something we'll be wanting to look at. It is my great pleasure to have the opportunity to open this seminar in the great city of Nairobi today. <laughs> I'm extremely grateful to the distinguished guests from Kenyan government represented by the Ministry of Environment and Forestry, Ministry of Transport, Infrastructure, Housing and Urban Development, and other honorable guests and participants from Kenya and Japan. <laughs> Our ministry has held a series of technical seminars in Asian countries since 2017. Uh, this is a very first time to organize a seminar in Africa. We have chosen Nairobi as the venue of the seminar because about 100 units of Jokaso from Japan have already been installed in Kenya. <coughs> We'd be happy to introduce more about Jokaso, which is a decentralized wastewater technology from Japan. <coughs> and we hope Jokaso will contribute to your efforts to improve the environment of water and sanitation in Kenya. Today, we are inviting eight speakers from public, academic, and private sector in Japan and Kenya. They are very active in the front lines of wastewater treatment field. <laughs> Further to their presentations, you can actually see the miniature Jokaso model outside this room in a relatively short period. <laughs> Jokaso system in Japan is regulated by the Jokaso Act, which stipulates technical standards for Jokaso installation, operation, and maintenance including guest watching, as well as a uh, qualification system of Jokaso related technicians. <coughs> In addition, Jokaso needs to pass the performance evaluation, evaluation test before bringing it into the market. <coughs> this is very important for how we assure the performance and quality of Jokaso. Last but not least, the sludge generated from Jokaso is appropriately treated at nice soil treatment facilities in Japan. When we have an opportunity to introduce Jokaso system to our partner countries like today, we always would like to underline our lessons learned from our experiences. 
which is that Jokaso can play the role of a wastewater treatment facility only when it becomes a system integrating the facility and its management. This point will be further elaborated in my and Jokaso manufacturer's presentation later today. Also, Japanese Jokaso manufacturer will share with you their works and challenges in Kenya. <laughs>